Hello and welcome to PlayStation Racer. My name is Mitchell Morgan and today we are going to be heading off to Le Mans and for a very different type of race. I've just got half an hour to kill. So we dived into the Honda RA272 1965 racing car and we're going to go up against touring cars of 700 pp or less for a 30 minute race. This is my grinding track. And if we go clean, we'll get 825,000 credits. But, as you can see there, we are up against the Viper, the Corvette. There's an Aston Martin in there. There are some pretty quick cars. There's a, an M4, there's a WRX. There's some pretty quick cars in there. And either this car is going to be really quick, and we'll go through them quite nicely, or it's not, and we're going to have trouble. Now... Those of you that know about this grinding track will know that it often starts off dry, goes wet, goes dry. So we are going to have a mix of weather. I've got intermediate tyres as well as the racing mediums that we're on. Uh, so we'll see how we go in this particular video. This one is going to be primarily bonnet cam. And then for the last two laps, we'll go inside the car and I'll run the last couple of laps um, as if we were driving it for real. I'm also going to produce and release a second video, which is the TV cam review of this beautiful, beautiful racing car. Uh, so watch out for that video. I'll probably link to it at the end of this one. Uh, but for now, let's get into the race. So we've just gone through the first few corners. We've managed to get ourselves up into 16th place and we are trying to streamline the draft of these cars down this long, long straight with the chicanes. We've got chicanes today. And I'm just trying to slipstream these cars to try and get as much performance out of this racing car. Braking nice and early because uh, we don't want to run into the back of these cars in front. We're also not too early because the cars behind and uh, we really are in the mix of a gaggle of cars. So just coming out of the first chicane, we now find ourselves in 11th. Coming up on this Mustang, we'll see, see if we can get past that using slipstream from the car in front. Come out of the slipstream to do the Mitsubishi and the Subaru. And now we've lost the benefits of slipstream and we're going to need to bury the brake pedal really early to get this turned in for the second slipstream. The Subaru came through, or oh, we get hit by the Mitsubishi. I'm not sure whether the Mitsubishi hit us or whether we went round, but I definitely felt that the car became very, very unbalanced through there. We've also got front end damage at this point that we need to be aware of, but very, very aware of the fact that the 11th place person is very, very close behind us, and we've only got half a second to the cars in front, so getting it slow down for this tight right hander back on the power as soon as we can and up through the gearbox trying to keep the slipstream to the Mitsubishi in front we've got the slipstream so we can come past now I'm thinking can we pick up the slipstream from the Subaru and do the same bearing in mind we come into this very fast right hander now very often when I'm in the BMW I'm pretty much going through the first part of this corner completely flat and then as we get it turned in over this curb, we bury the brake pedal down into this corner. I'm finding with this vintage car that I'm having to, rightly so, having to find very different ways of driving this car to get the most performance from it. So my braking points are changing, the way I'm turning in is changing. Um, the way I'm setting myself up for corners is changing. And in this early part of this race, in a car that is brand new to us, although it's got a thousand miles on the clock, of course, uh, this was bought from the Legends garage, so we had a fair amount of miles on it when I started. Um, it is a very new car to me, so learning how it handles, how it behaves, how much you can take curves, how much you can lean on it through the corners, this is all a learning experience at this time. And we're only four minutes in. So uh, we've already picked up a 
half a second penalty for track limits there. So minded that we have got to watch track limits on this particular run. Uh, we are in eighth place as we come into the first of these. This is the longer chicane, and then we get the tight chicane before we go over the start finish straight or start finish line. And we are 1.6 seconds away from the car in front with a 2.9 second advantage over the car behind. We are going to need to serve our penalty uh, probably during this lap. So this is going to be about three minute cars in front and trying to get a, uh, a benefit so that that penalty doesn't hurt us too much. Although we didn't do too, too well through that little complex when we looked deep as did the car in front. So just trying to get it settled down and just thinking about turning points, gears, power, everything through this little complex. And then on this corner, we want to try and take as much as we can on the inside without drifting too wide. The car in front gets a bit wide, so we end up going to the outside. Hopefully we didn't pick up a penalty and we kept our wheel on the right side of the track. And this is actually what the view from the inside is really nice. We will come back to that view for the last couple of laps of this video. So if you just want to jump straight to that, I will have some track markers for this video. So as you're coming down to the first chicane, we're looking for our braking point. So it's kind of about 150 meter point, I think it was, I was braking, turning in. Turn in again, looking for a really good exit speed here so we can get on the back of the uh, the Aston Martin, it looks like, in front of us. Just trying to make as much progress as we can, but really not making enough progress at the moment. It doesn't look like we've really picked up the slip screen. We're coming down into the second chicane. This is an opportunity for, for me to really close up. As you can see there, under braking, we get very close to these three cars that we're all running together. We need to make sure that we get a good exit here so that we can stay with them, keeping the slipstream as we come down to this very tight right-hander at the bottom. The time is coming down ever so slowly. I don't feel like I've really got much benefit from the slipstream so either we weren't in the slipstream or this car isn't going to get towed along but under braking we do manage to close right up and we are well you can see the gap now to the Aston Martin although it's opened it up to about half a second we really need to push a penalty served oh no it wasn't penalties to come I'm losing my, my track of where we are so um, just did those two cars should be able to get fourth place as we come into this little complex where i do tend to break beforehand which gives the lexus the opportunity to come through and get him under braking no we can't so we just need to settle this down make sure that we don't run into the back of them we've got the penalty coming up car behind is 1.2 seconds of behind and catching. Penalty is served. So it's just going down to third gear for the penalty just so that uh, we can get uh, back on the on the accelerator and get moving as soon as possible. So the line of fifth place at the moment. The leaders are still 15 seconds down the road and I'm thinking that we are 10 minutes nearly 10 minutes into this race, so nearly a third of the way through. And we're really not making much headway on the leaders and really concerned that maybe we might have bought a car that really isn't up to the task. We've got a cloud in the sky at the moment, so it looks like we are not going to get a break with the weather that might help us. Can we carry on pushing through for another lap? This is going to be lap number three that we're going to start in a moment. There we go. And still 13, nearly 14 seconds 
away from the leader, which is a huge amount of time to make up on this particular track. Now I will remind you that I am on full power at the moment. It's not really any fuel worries. As you can see, we are just coming up for a third of the way through the race and we've only used a, a quarter of our fuel. So fuel should be fine. The tyres aren't looking too bad. We're on the racing mediums, which can see, oh, just caught the back of the Viper there. Oh, that was a bit nasty. Nearly lost it on the grass, just managed to hold it all together. Very dirty tyres, damage to the near side front and the front bumper. It's given the Viper the opportunity to really get away from this. So a little bit stupid, We've got rear bumper damage as well. A little bit stupid through there. We really should have just waited, picked up the streamline on the Viper down here and it could have been a lot easier. Losing so much momentum. The Aston Martin is coming by as well now. Vantage just got so much more grunt than we have. He goes a little bit wide, which gives us the opportunity to duck in the inside. It gives us back the place. But I am very much minded that that car is quicker than us. It's also got our slipstream as well. So it would be surprised as we come down into the next chicane that the Aston Martin is going to be right with us. Gee, we're actually pulling away from the Aston Martin slightly and making a little bit of headway on the car in front. Not too much. We'll make a lot of time up under braking. So we need to make sure that we do a much cleaner overtake on the Viper on this occasion. We're going to get an opportunity into the final corner. We're still 0.8 of a second behind, which is quite a bit. We're keeping the Aston Martin behind us fairly honest. He's still sitting at 1.8, 1.9 seconds behind. Really close up on the, the Viper into the corner. The Viper absolutely buries the brake pedal on the apex of the corner, which really causes us a problem. We have to get so far out of the, the throttle there. Uh, then that's given the Viper a chance to pull away yet again. So that's two potential opportunities to overtake the Viper. Both messed up. Also, watching the weather radar right now, we've got a lot of weather that's coming in. And as we come up towards the end of this lap, already now starting to think that we've got to get past the Viper, but what tyres do, get, do we go with? Do, do we try for another lap? Do we come in for the intermediates? We can't go wet because we haven't bought wet. Those tyres are not available to us. And looking at the weather radar, there is an awful lot of dark blue on there, indicating that there is quite a bit of weather coming through. So just coming back to the action, we're going to run on the Viper down the right hand side, but we're going to need to get this slowed down, turned in, for this fast fifth gear right hander he sweeps back across to the left again fifth or even fourth gear sometimes you drop down to fourth on this occasion then we've got this fast again we've got right hander normally stick on fourth through here fourth is good and then we need to get this turned in and not go over the hatchings on the outside of the curb otherwise we will pick up another penalty so that was all quite nice we build a gap of 1.8 to the cars behind and we close into 3.7 to the car in front but I don't like the look of that weather we're going to come in we're going to put intermediates on and just see if we can get to the end of the race on intermediates I don't think we need any fuel because by the time we come out we're going to be over halfway through this race and uh, we've got well over half a tank. If I need to come in and just do a very quick squirt then we'll have to do that. Just get a very small amount of fuel. Um, hopefully we'll be able to get to the end of the lap and lots and lots and lots of people pitting. I'm not quite sure what tyres they're putting on, whether they are putting on their uh, the, the intermediates, but we've got a right old mix of soft 
hard and medium tyres for people that are in this particular race. So a lot of people started on a real old different, different mix. Now have they gone into intermediates? Have they put slicks on? I'm looking at the weather and I think intermediates are probably the way to go. You can see the rain is really coming down right now. So this again is now all brand new to me in this particular car. I know how the BMW VGT is going to handle in these sorts of conditions. This Honda, I have no clue how it's going to behave. Are we going to be able to get the car slowed down? Are we going to be able to get it turned in? Is it going to slide off? This is a case that we're going to need to take this a little bit cautiously. We find ourselves in third gear, third place at the moment. So seven seconds off of the second place driver. 8.8, .8, nearly nine seconds long only away from the leader. So you do seem to have closed up quite considerably. Now, whether they have got slick tyres on, did they pit? I can't remember if they pitted or not. Have they got slick tyres on the car when they're sliding around? Have they got intermediates? I can't understand why. Whoa, that was a big old slide on the way out of there. I, I can't quite work out why we've managed to catch up with the two leaders that quickly, if I'm perfectly honest. Was it really paying enough attention? The weather radar is still not looking too clever. I think we've made the right decision to go with the intermediate. You can see how wet it is down here. I'm just trying to get it slowed down under braking. The back of the car is sliding around everywhere. Just looking at the two cars in front, how they're negotiating this. Uh, they seem to be sliding a little bit, as are we. Um, but not really giving too much away as to whether they are on intermediates or slicks at this stage. Or they both have moments where they go way off to the left. Maybe they are on slicks because that was a very, very unusual exit for them. And I get a little bit wet. Lost all traction. You can feel it. Aquaplaning lost all traction. And a big old spin hit the barrier. So this is not going to be plain sailing for us. We are definitely going to have to uh, think about what we're doing. So completely slowed everything down right now. We are eight seconds ahead of the second place. We're going to find ourselves obviously in first place after the issues that the two cars behind have. And we are 10 seconds ahead of them. So they are clearly struggling for grip right now those cars behind. This is an opportunity for me to build a lead, build a gap, but we have also got to be careful. It's very, very wet right now. As you can see going through here, totally different lines. Very slow, second gear through there. Although the rain seems to be past, so the weather radar is black again right now with the weather clearing to the north. Uh, we have got rain all around us. We've got uh, rain to the east and the west. Sunshine out at the moment, and this track can dry pretty quickly. But we've got to be very minded of dry lines, wet lines, keeping this car in a straight line at all times. Keeping one eye on the times of the cars behind, 16 seconds at the moment, so we've got a nice gap this building. Watching for the apexes, watching for the braking points, watching for the turning points, watching gears, speed, and the weather radar. Because it looks like we've got another on the brain that is coming in. So can we use this fine part of the race where the weather is pretty fine? Can we use this to try and build a gap to the second place person so that if we do need to pit again, hopefully we can get in and our all oh, big slide there to afford myself. Big, big moment, big moment. Did really well to catch that one. I was really pleased. 
the uh, force feedback on the steering wheel really coming into its own there to get it slowed down and keep it under control. However, with all slides like that, concentration now has com uh, confidence, I should say, has completely gone. Concentration levels are off the planet. Really, really, really have to concentrate right now. Um, but yes, a, a lot of confidence gone in this car. I need to try and build that confidence back. Now, interestingly, the second and third place people have just come into the pit, uh, whereas we have carried on. The fourth and fifth are also in the pit, and they're showing hard tyres. So, interesting. Did they come out on on slicks, whereas I came out on intermediates? That could really, really, really play into our hands because if I can get to the end on these intermediate tyres that is going to be really really good but this weather is coming down quite a lot now. weather is really really coming down um, the 48 seconds ahead which is pretty good just be very very careful at the moment Breaking extremely early, very, very early, and we're still going to want to shoot that corner. And we get a spin. So, even though we are breaking extremely early for the corner, there is so much moisture down in the track that these intermediate tyres are really, really not cutting it for us. It does mean that we're going to have to be extremely careful, but Cars behind it also seem to be having some difficulties because we are still 51 seconds ahead of the second place driver even though we just had that massive, massive moment. And although I'm saying that we need to take it easy, uh, as you can see, we are still also having to keep pushing. So watching for the braking zone, braking good and early, making sure we're braking in a straight line, get the speed, completely off the car before we turn into these corners and we're just trying to keep the car in a straight line especially under power starting to short shift a little bit I'm just wondering whether we should actually be short shifting even more to uh, try and keep this thing pointing in a straight line so braking is extremely early for this type right hander way too early if i'm perfectly honest and the cars behind making up massive amounts of time on us uh, we've got just eight minutes left so a, a four maybe five minute lapse uh, that means that we've potentially got two laps to do we are in first place, we are 45 seconds ahead of the second place person. They did pit, but what tyres did they put on? Have they got slips? Have they got intermediates? I think intermediates are okay at the moment, but as the weather's clearing, if we get a dry line, anybody that is on slicks are going to be super, super fast. And that 45 seconds will disappear faster than you really want it to so still quite a lot of moisture on the track so being very careful at the moment uh, car is still sliding around a bit underneath us but we are nevertheless pushing on as fast as we can it's 140 miles an hour just taking the speed off getting it down to around about 100 miles an hour fourth gear through here sometimes i would do fifth sometimes we do fourth definitely fourth in these conditions it is drying so we've got to start thinking about where we can start pushing and where we need to be a little bit respectful of the track so stay with fourth gear through here keeping to the right sweeping across to the left didn't really get enough curb there but we are going slow enough that we don't grip drift too far to the right and as we come down to the first of the chicanes 
looking to bury the brake pedal as we go past the pit entry. Short sprint to the next one. And that puts us 46 seconds ahead. At this point, I thought, hey, let's go for the inside cockpit for the last lap, which actually then turned into be two laps because we are doing high four minute, no five minute laps. That was a 5.05, the last one as the track is drying out. And one of the first things that you notice when you're in the car is how low it is. Trying to see some of the apexes on these corners at this height is so, so difficult. So difficult, but a lovely view nonetheless. Nice and detailed cockpit, the steering wheel looks really good. The controls look really good, including the uh, rev counter being sideways mounted. Not sure why that is. Somebody in the comments who, or somebody who knows, maybe they can comment in the comment section. Um, interesting layout of dials. And we're just pushing on, pushing on, you come down to the first of the chicane. It's actually quite difficult to pick my breaking point in this particular view. Um, pretty hard on the brakes and we came off, just so that we don't slide too much. And then, yeah, settling down quite nicely here. Four minutes to run, 46 seconds ahead. So at the moment, no race, no cars to overtake. Uh, not going to be lapping anybody. At the moment, this really is just a solo run. Just trying to make sure that we keep it going in a straight line and see if we can bring this home. So at the moment, this is all fairly boring. Just a uh, normal day in the office, as it were. Again, just watching for the apexes, watching for the dry line forming. Obviously in the shade, the water doesn't clear quite as quickly as it does in the sunshine. We need to uh, make sure we legislate for all conditions. It's the beauty of driving in the snow, sorry, in the rain. Uh, if it was snowy, even worse. We turned in to this right hand section. No penalty to serve on this lap, which is good. We've got some red sectors, so we're not as quick, um, but with, with a 48 second advantage, uh, we can start to take this race just a little bit easy rather than you know, hooning it around the tracks all the time and somebody drops me back or whatever. Uh, but there we go, chain four gone there, but I wonder quite where I was going with that one. Just enjoying this run an awful lot, just thoroughly enjoying it, just mumble this. So, 45 seconds ahead at the moment, underneath the Force Bridge, yeah, it's got a special name this bit, this little section through here, really need to learn the names of these corners on this beautiful track. I'm just loving this view. The two wheels out the front, the cockpit, a little bit of glass in front of us. Not quite sure what the bolts are for, but um, could be for lying on the car on the track or something, I wouldn't know. But starting to get a feel for this car now. I think in a, in a race where it's a little bit dry out, we've got some really nice sliding going on to power through the corners. But since we come up to the end of that lap, lap six, we are still 41 seconds ahead of the second place. They are catching us. 
They're definitely catching us up. So I don't know quite what tyres they're on, but they're far enough away at the moment. Not exactly setting rapid times. We've got it down to a 4.44. So as the track is drying out, we are definitely getting quicker. But I am minded that we are on intermediate tyres on a rapidly drying track. Hopefully, they will last until the end of this lap. We're coming up to 40 seconds of the lap remaining. So in some respects, it was a bit of a shame that we ended up having to do an extra lap. OK, so they're all coming into the pits. It looks like they're all on intermediates and they're all coming in the pits to take off those intermediate tyres. So it looks like our car has actually been running quite nicely on these intermediate tyres and that's going to put them a significant number of seconds behind us. So at the moment they're showing 56 seconds behind us, nearly a minute behind us as we go down the straight into the last chicane, sorry the first chicane. So we're going from the right, swing around to the left and then right again. Sums out, tracks drying. So seventh and eighth place, or fifth place have all finished. So it looks like we've only got first, second and third. No, nope, only first and second that are running. The rest have all finished. 1.13 seconds behind us. So all we need to do now is bring this home. I don't know whether this is going to be a clean race or not. But for the moment, I'm just enjoying, enjoying running this beautiful, beautiful car. It's awfully late, but I couldn't resist staying up and just finishing this video. We really should have called it a, a night. In fact, I shouldn't even have really done this run. Oh, made a mistake. I'm having such a nice run in this particular view, right at the end. Thrown it off the track. Really, no need for that at all. So we are one minute eleven seconds ahead of the viewer. Even with that bump across the gravel there, I imagine that that will probably come down in a moment. But you can see we are absolutely destroying, annihilating the competition. Completely annihilated them. So 1.10, 1 minute 10. So the time has come down ever so slightly. It's tight right now, we'll just get it slowed down, second gear, turned in, get back on the power as soon as we can. We're coming up to the penalty box, nothing to serve, so power through here. It's thoroughly enjoying this car right now, thoroughly enjoying it. We're keeping the, um, I was going to say, we're keeping the time fairly honest, 1.1 second to the car behind. Uh, the car behind has just taken out nearly half a second, so we're down to 1.04. Oh, slight visit to the wall there, just ran the wheels along the wall. It's down to 1 minute and 3, I can get this stage. There is not a lot we can do now, we've just got to keep pushing on. That's going to potentially be a penalty going wide across those hatchings there. Just watching to see whether we do get a penalty. It'd be nice if we don't. We're coming up to the chicane, third gear. Got it turned in. Over, over the second. It's down into second gear for this one. Again, turn it in. Much more acute. And in a straight run to the line. Looks like we might not have got a penalty. It doesn't matter too much because we are still over a minute ahead of the second place person. So at the beginning part of that race, I really, really didn't think 
that this car had the legs to win and to win in such a conclusive and deciding manner. We've got a clean race bonus as well, so full 825,000 credits. Beautiful car, beautiful race, really pleased. Thank you ever so much for joining me for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, please hit the thumbs up button. And I look forward to seeing you on another video coming very soon. For now, take care. Bye-bye.